it's Pete here, and today I wanted to talk about the quantitative Forno Trump bid. I think there's a fantastic tool that is either underutilized or some people just don't really know about it. So what I wanted to talk about is what is quantitative Forno Trump, uh, why it's actually useful, and quantitative Forno Trump versus Blackwood, and to talk about a few different actual situations. So first of all, what is quant or quantitative Forno Trump? So let's have a look at an auction here. So for example, one no Trump pass four no Trump. This would be an example of a quantitative four no Trump bid. And basically it's just a natural invite. It's, there's a lot, like there's a lot of uh, confusion about it, but basically it's just natural. It's saying, do you want to go to six no Trump or do you want to just leave it here in uh, four no Trump? So like, because the game level's at three no Trump, we've bypassed that by one level. We're just using that to say, partner, do you have a bit extra for your, for your range? So quant is extremely natural. It's really easy to play. The main hurdle that you actually have to get over is when is it actually quantitative for no Trump and when is it something else like Roman keycard? So first of all, let's look at why quant is actually good. Most people think that when bidding slams, you actually need uh, just, you need enough aces and then you can actually bid slams, but that's not really it. Um, Roman keycard, when you use it, it's basically saying, I was just about to bid slam, but I need to find out if we have enough aces just in case that the opponents can cash too. But if you didn't have Roman keycard, what you're saying is you were just going to be bidding slam. And that was like your final check before actually bidding it. But there are lots of times where you're like, well, I'm close to slam, but I need to know if partners actually got a good hand for their range or not. So like you've got a few extra points, but you don't know whether you, like your partner's minimum or their maximum. So for instance, let's say partner opened one no trump in this sequence, playing 15 to 17, and you have 16 or 17 points. Let's say 16 points. If your partner's only got 15, You've only got 31 points, so you probably don't have enough gas in the tank to actually try and make slam. Whereas if partner's got 17 points, then yes, you do, and you'll have 33 points, and that's enough to want to actually be in slam. So with quantitative 4 no trump, basically you're checking, do you have enough points to actually get there? And one thing you'll notice is if partner's maximum, and you're asking, do you have 33 combined points, is the general idea of it. If you do have 33 combined points, you aren't missing two aces. So if you're not missing two aces, that why did you actually have to use Blackwood anyway? So um, you use it to say, I'm checking if we have enough points to try and go uh, for six no trumps or a slam. So what sort of hands should accept quantitative four no trumps are basically hands that are just maximum or have some extra values. So you use the four no trump bid to say, I've got uh, an invitational hand to slam. So you look at whatever range you've actually shown so far and then think, am I minimum for my point range or maximum? And if I'm maximum, I should go. If I'm minimum, I just want to stop. There's a whole lot of other factors that you look for as well, such as do I have a source of tricks? Um, how good does my hand look for slam in general? Um, is it all queens and jacks or do I have some other useful cards as well? Um, so they're the sorts of things that you actually look for. But uh, onto the like critical point, when is Forno Trump's quantitative and when is it Blackwood? Lots of pairs have some different rules about when it is and some pairs play it one way and some the other way. I'm just gonna go through what I like to do and a few different actual philosophies that I have around it. So first of all, after the final bid was no trumps, I tend to like four no trumps as quantitative. So here, when we've, whenever we've shown a balanced hand, so one no trump, four no trumps, if two no trumps, four no trumps, if we uh, open a suit and then rebid two no trumps and then jump to four no trumps. Basically, whenever no trumps was the final bid and then we bid four no over it, I like that just to be a quantitative four no trump. Um, Another one is that after stamen and transfers, so this, this really depends on what your methods are, but let's look at a couple of auctions where we've bid stamen and then a few auctions where we've actually uh, transferred. So let's say it's gone one, one no trump, we bid stamen and um, our partner bids two spades 
And we have a 16 or 17 point hand with four hearts. We haven't found a fit, and if partner's minimum still, we don't want to be in slam. But if Forno trumps his Roman key card, then how do we actually invite slam in these spots? Well, I like Forno trumps to be quantitative Forno trump. And the reason being is there's actually a way that you can set your suit. And my general rule that I use is if you can set the trump suit, then, and you haven't instead, um, you're using quantitative Forno trump. So if you have a simple way to set the uh, trump suit um, and show that you're in a forcing auction, but choose not to do that, then you're saying you don't have a fit. And this is because I'm a huge advocate for Q-bidding towards slams and using the Q-bidding uh, conventions, which means that if you can set the trump suit, you allow yourself to Q-bid. So if you don't do that, uh, you basically don't have a fit. And if you don't have a fit, you want to use quantitative Forno trump. So I would have this bid here as quantitative Forno trump. So the question is, how do you actually set the spade suit in slam trap? So after stamen, what you tend to do is bid the other major at the three level. So if partner responds two hearts, you can bid three spades. And if partner bids two spades, you can bid three hearts. And this says, I have a fit for you and I'm interested in slam. So it's a bit unusual, but it's quite useful when you think about it, because there's no reason why you'd want to be bidding hearts naturally here. You might have bid statement and your partner says, I don't have uh, hearts, and yet you're still bidding it. So you can use this as a completely artificial bid to say, partner, I have support for you. Please start Q bidding and we're in a slam trying auction. And this means that you can go through this way, find out about Q bidding and then move into key card. Um, similarly, if partner bids two hearts, you don't really have any reason to jump to three spades uh, here. Um, oops, didn't need to alert two hearts. Uh, so if you bid three spades, this says nothing about control in spades, just says I'm slam trying, we have a heart fit, please start Q bidding. So notice that we have this way to set the trump suit after a stamen bid, which means that when we don't do that, but instead jump to four no trumps, this is actually quantitative and denies having a heart fit, um, which basically partner can either pass or they could uh, choose to bid six no trumps, for instance, or maybe even six spades if they had a spade fit in this particular instance. So quantitative is a bid that can be passed. I haven't mentioned that yet, but I think it's very important to say you can either pass four no trumps or you accept it and jump to six no trump if you're maximum, just like any other natural invite. So let's now look at uh, when you have a transfer sequence. So this really depends on what other methods you actually have when you're transferring. So let's say we bid two diamonds, partner bids two hearts, and we jump to four no trumps. So is this Roman key card or is this quantitative four no trump? Because again, you might have the hand with 16, 17 points with uh, five card heart suits. And you might just want to invite slam rather than just uh, forcing to slam opposite um, a one no trump opening. So here, I would have this as quant again. So this can be passed, it's just inviting partner and saying, I have precisely five hearts, do you wanna to go to slam or not? Bid six hearts, six no trump, or pass four no trump. So the other way that you could set the suit and slam try really depends on your methods, but most partnerships have one of two ways that they could actually do this. Number one is they might just do natural slam tries. So if you jump to three, the three level, it might be a natural slam try for you, showing a six card suit. Or you might play Texas transfers where you do transfers at the four level as well. So for instance, you might do four diamonds as a transfer to hearts, showing a six card suit. And if you do this, this says we have six hearts and therefore we have a fit. So we're using Roman key card. So if you have shown a fit, you are using Roman keycard. If you've set the suit, you are using Roman keycard. If you have a clear way to show that you have a fit, but don't do it, then it's instead quantitative. So here I would have four no trumps be Roman keycard um, if you're playing Texas transfers. But if instead you transferred at the two level and then uh, jump to uh, four no trumps, it would be invitational. So these two sequences, one shows that you've only got five hearts, doesn't guarantee a fit, and just says, are you minimum or maximum? The other one guarantees a fit because you have to have at least six opposite your balance partner, and therefore you are asking for Roman key cards. 
So that's what I like to do over stamen and transfers. So uh, basically, if you have a way to set the suit and choose not to do it, it's therefore natural and invitational. So for instance, let's say it goes um, one spade by the opponents and we bid two hearts and it goes pass and we might choose to bid four no trump. Here, I would take this as quant, like saying I've got quite a good hand, what do you want to do? Because I'd have a way of supporting hearts, which would be bidding two spades. This would be a curate. I'd take the auction slower, this would promise the fit, and because I had an easy way of showing the fit, when you don't do that, then I like it to actually be natural and invitational. The exact range of what Forno Trump would be here uh, is a bit hard to judge, but basically you're inviting partner and saying, do you have a few extras for it? Um, so here we have an easy way to set hearts. We can make a Q raise. When you don't do that, then you don't have the fit. And this all comes back to the idea that I really like getting into Q bidding options and Forno Trump should be the final spot along your way, along the way. So in these auctions, if you have a clear way that you can set the Trump suit and then choose not to, then you don't have a fit. So there are certain always going to be times when it's really murky about what you've actually got. Um, there's not always clear ways that you can set the trump suit. And in those ones, then it's usually, if you bid for no trumps, it'll be key card on the last bid suit. So only if there is a clear way that you could set the suit and choose not to, then uh, you're denying a fit and would have it as quantitative for no trump. Whereas if you have... Um, there's certain times where the opponents propel you up a bit higher and you don't have an easy way to set the suit. If that's the case, then what I like to do is just use uh, four no trumps as key card on the last bid suit. So for instance, the auction might go four hearts, four spades, and we go four no trump. Okay, we didn't have a way to set the suit. This is uh, Roman key card on spades. So if the auction escalates and you don't have a way to set the suit, then uh, you're just doing it on the last bid suit. So basically, in your partnerships, you want to find out, work out ways how you can actually set the trump suit at a lower level, which allows you to get into Q bidding, which I think is a very underrated tool. Most people think that four no trumps is the only slam trying tool I dis dislike that a lot. You really need to be able to work out how do I set the suit, move into a cube bidding auction, and then finally into key card. And if you skip all those steps and had a way to set the suit but choose not to, then I like for no trump just to be a natural invite. Because there's lots of hands that you actually pick up where you don't actually have a fit for partner, but you have some extra points and you're not really sure how to progress, um, and you just end up bidding three no, three no trumps undervaluing your hand. So as a general rule, what I like to do is if you can set the suit and you choose not to, you don't have a fit. And therefore, it's a, a natural invite rather than Roman key card. So my general rules for uh, quant versus Blackwood is after we've bid no trumps, it's quantitative for no trump. Um, key card can be on the last bid suit if we didn't have a way to actually set the trump suit, in which case in ambiguous spots it is probably Roman key card. If you did have a way to set the trump suit and choose not to, then it is a um, quantitative for no trump. And then a special case is after stamen and transfers, uh, which not everyone knows how to actually set the suit. If you use stamen and your partner responds a major, Bidding the other major at the three level sets the trump suit. If you were playing transfers, usually you have a way of showing a six card suit and a slam try, whether it be a Texas transfer or maybe just jumping to the three level initially. And if you don't use those, but just transfer at the two level and then jump to four no trump, you're just showing a five card suit, which means that again, you're just natural and invitational. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this uh, lesson on quantitative four no trump when it applies and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.